speaks on our behalf. This morning, according to Luke 10, 19, it is our portion, and nothing shall by any means harm us. This morning, we declare Psalm 91 over ourselves, Jehovah God. And even as we pray, we ask that you would assign your angels amongst us and to be with us. Lord Jesus, we thank you for you say you never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you for your presence and being with us continually. Holy Spirit of God, we welcome you to guide us as we pray. May it not be our words, may it not be our thoughts, but you leading us on what to pray and what to bring before the Father. We thank you so much and we love you. Father, we just want to worship you this morning because you alone deserve the worship. You alone deserve the praise. And Father, as we continually pray that our focus remains on you. Father, we will not elevate the enemy and what he is doing. Jehovah God, but we focus on you. You who is the truth, you who is the light, and you who has said that you have conquered all. You conquered death. You conquered the grave. It is you we look to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, this morning, I'm sure each one of us is aware about the children from Kakamega Primary School and the, their unfortunate death. And this morning, I'd like us to bring our children before the Lord. We, some of us may be aware, others are not, that in this season of revival, the Lord is going to use children powerfully. We know the family unit is very important, and it has been fought. Fought. We have seen it in our nation, with the agenda of homosexuality coming in. A lot of things in families happening, the Mpangwa candles, which we declared is no more in our nation anyway. But all these things that have come to attack the family unit, our children, the sex education in schools, drugs, addictions, exposure to a lot of pornography through social media, in TV, in the televisions, what they read, the, the sort of storybooks they are reading, teaching them how to chance to be witches and wizards when they are so young. Why? Because this is a generation that the Lord is going to use mightily. Why? The family unit is a unit that was created by God. We see straight from Genesis, Adam and Eve. But you know what? We will not focus on the enemy. We will continue to pray. And that is why revival, the full manifestation of the glory of God in our nation is so important. We need to press in and to pray. We cannot be the people, the church that prays only when there's trouble, only when something has happened do we arise, and then tomorrow we quickly forget. We can't be, and we will not be. We'll continue to pray. We have prayed for so many days. I think today is day 170. 170, isn't it? 166. I'm moving ahead because we are going on and we are not stopping. Yeah? And day 30. Day 30 today of prayer and fasting for the consecration of our nation. And even this morning, we are going to ask the Lord to consecrate our nation. Whatever has happened in Kakamega, we cannot say it's Kakamega. It is us. It is our nation. The blood of Jesus Christ was enough. The sacrifice he gave was enough. No other sacrifice should be given in this nation or anywhere else. We need to take care of our children. We are their guardians, each one of us. Whether you have children or you don't have children, you have nieces, nephews, brothers, sisters, you have somebody. You're also a child yourself, you know. We need to pray for our children. They're in the forefront of what the Lord wants to do. We must guide them, counsel them, teach them how to pray. It is our responsibility. Bring them in the house of the Lord. We are, we, we are quick to ensure they go to school. But are we quick to bring them to the house of the Lord? That's our challenge today. We are quick to make them rise up early in the morning, get ready, and go to school. In the morning as we come here, 5 o'clock, they're in school buses, aren't they? Why is it difficult for us to bring them into the house of the Lord when we say 6.30 a.m. on Sunday for prayer? Why aren't they here? 
we are saying the children are taking time to get ready. The children are slow to get ready. But they are quick to get ready. At 6 o'clock, they are already on their way to school. We need to repent. That attitude is wrong. To the house of the Lord, we are slow. We are disobedient. We cannot leave parenting to the teachers. Because some teachers have another agenda. They are on assignment. They are Satanists. We have to be involved in the lives of our children. We cannot leave our children to our house girls, to the nannies and housekeepers. We cannot leave them. God gave you. He blessed you. A child is a gift from God. How can he give you that blessing and then you leave it to someone else to take care of? It is wrong. We must repent. We must teach them the way. And the way, the truth, and the life is in the word of God. We are quick to get them gadgets to keep them busy while we are also busy on our own gadgets. To keep them on the screens instead of teaching them the word of God. Buy them a children's Bible. There's no excuse. There's absolutely no excuse. They want to watch something, put a Bible story. Make sure you know what the Bible story is about. Ask them what they learned. Take them through. Take them through studying the word of God. You will answer before the Lord. You will be held accountable. Whether you like it or not, you will be held accountable. And each one of us will be held accountable. When the children come into the sanctuary, we teach them how to be still. They can be still in class for a whole lesson, 45 minutes. I'm not sure whether it's 40, 45 minutes these days. They can be still an, a whole morning before break. Take their break, continue till lunch. Take their lunch, continue till, what, 4 o'clock? They can be still. But they, you don't want them to be still in the house of the Lord. We must discipline our children. Isn't it? And you will regret if the world begins to teach them when you had an opportunity. And we have such a short opportunity with our children. They grow very fast. We need to pray for our children even before we conceive them. We must pray for them. If the Lord says that even before we were formed in our mother's wombs, in the womb, he knew us. He knew us. So we must pray, too, for our children before they are conceived. Whether you're married or you're not married, pray for your children now. Secure them. Speak about your children. Seek the Lord about your children. Pray for yourself to be a good parent. You yourself must be grounded in the word of God. You cannot give what you do not have. You're not spending time in the word of God. You're waiting for the Sunday school teacher to do a miracle on Sunday for two hours. It cannot happen. May the Lord rebuke us. And may we change because we shall give an account. We need to listen in this era to what our children are saying. When they tell us, let us pray, don't shun them away. Listen to them. Teach them how to pray. Teach them the posture to take when it is time for prayer, when it is time to worship. Teach them. You will be held accountable. Matthew, it was Matthew eleven twenty six that says, or 16, that says, Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have perfected praise. Psalms, Psalm 8, 2. Psalm 8, 2 says, Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies. The Lord will speak to children. 
The Lord will use children to prophesy. Pay attention to children in gatherings. Pay attention to them at home. Pay attention to what they are saying. The Lord is going to use them. Do not shun them and say, just a little child. Don't silence them. Let's learn to pay attention. We remember a few weeks ago what the Lord did right here in this sanctuary. The purity of the heart of children. The angel feathers, the gold dust. The children, there's something the Lord is doing. And when the enemy knows that, he rises up against. And if we do not cover our children in prayer, we're in trouble. He's attacking children because of what God is doing and going to do through them in this new era. The glory of God will be upon children. We shall see miracle signs and wonders. And we are beginning to see little children preaching, teaching. We are seeing it even in this land, in this nation. Why then, would be, why then would we be asleep? We need to quicken, to hasten. We need to be alert. Jesus said in Matthew 19, 14, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for to such belong the kingdom of heaven. We must take care of our children. This morning, we have different institutions in Kenya that deal with education. We are going to bring the whole children agenda through education. It is one of the mountains, isn't it? Education. And perhaps we don't know, but this morning, we can learn about these systems, these edu this education systems, and know how to pray. Because we want to pray knowing what we are praying for. And even beyond today, we need to know what we are praying for and presenting before the Lord. We have the Ministry of Education, which governs education in our nation. We must pray for who is the Cabinet Secretary. Who is the PS? Who are the leaders in education? We must pray with knowledge. We must pray and ask the Lord to put people who fear him. We ask the Lord, when we are praying for education, what is the curriculum they are being taught in school? What are the books that are in their hands? Because from time to time, we get to learn that there are some books that are, you know, they are, they are desensitizing our children. You know, the word of God is being twisted. We see the agenda of homosexuality coming into schools. That the definition of family is moving away from husband and wife, man and woman the family unit, to two, two human beings. So it can be man and man, woman and woman, as long as they are two parents and not defining who their parents are. They have to be male and female because we saw Adam and Eve. There was no Adam and Adam, Eve and Eve. But more and more, our children are being desensitized to what really family is about. And then you don't want to look at their books. You don't want to do homework with your children. Brethren, we will be held accountable. You must engage in what your children are learning. You must know what their books have, what assignments they are being given. If you don't talk to them, someone else will talk to them. Our children are not like us when we were growing up. Things were sensitive. Our parents were a bit, uh, they didn't know perhaps how to go about it. But these children know things from when they are very young. They are exposed and they are very quick. They are quick to learn and pick things. In Kenya, We start education from the early childhood. We start education from early childhood. And I was looking at statistics. I was looking for the 2019 statistics this morning. But I only found the document for the statistics for, base, for education of 2016. But this will give you an idea. 
that early childhood, what is the pre-education? At that time, 2016, there were about 41,000 early childhood and development education centers, 41,000 at that time, 2016. Primary schools, just over 33,000 primary schools in Kenya. So you know what number we are dealing with, 33,000. And these are government st statistics at that time. And you know, prim in, in all this, we have the private, we have the international schools, we have schools that are doing other curriculum. These figures are for those that are doing the curriculum, what we know the, the, the Kenya curriculum, the 844. Secondary schools, were about 10,000. We have big figures. We have a lot of children we are praying for. When they do KCSE, they are, uh, KCP, they are over a million children. That's just class eight. Over a million children. And the figures are higher at primary school enrollment. Those who make it to class eight are just over a million. Primary school, the figures are more. So accumulatively, how many children are we talking about in school? And we know full well there are those who are not in school. We must pray for our children. This morning, we are going to mention the institutions in our nation and ask the Lord to change them. They have been infiltrated by leaders who are governing, who have an agenda to sacrifice our children. Our children are innocent. They are those who want to defile our children. Because this generation is special to God. And I'm not saying every other generation is not, but you can see what is happening clearly. We must bring the teachers. We must ask the Lord this morning to pull out, to root out every satanic teacher, any teacher who has an agenda. We must ask the Lord to, this day, it is us to pray. That anything in our curriculum for children, straight from primary till secondary education and up to the university and colleges and the technical institutions, anything that is sexualizing our children must be removed in the name of Jesus. This area I'm passionate about because education is an industry I'm in. So it bothers me when I see things happening that way. We must protect. We can have stations that, that have, have, have